Welcome to your weekly dose of encouragement here on the Midweek Update with Center Fork Baptist Church. It has been a busy week, so let's just get right to it. First, I want to give you an update on the work that's happening at the parsonage that we live in. The new fence is almost completed. Uh, all, we, all we lack is one gate to be installed, and that will be uh, finished. It's going to be a great addition to the property, and we're going to enjoy that privacy fence and also the backyard. On Saturday, as you can see from the pictures, my colleague and his brother Lance uh, repaired the parsonage chimney. There was actually a big hole on the cap, in the cap at the top of the uh, chimney, and the whole cap, the whole top of the chimney, the concrete up there had to be replaced. So those guys uh, took their Saturday morning and uh, knocked that job out, and uh, I got to annoy them a little bit and climbed up the ladder up and down a few times and carried a few things for them and uh, got to enjoy watching them do some great work. So thank you to Mike and his brother Lance. They did a fantastic job on, on the uh, fireplace. Also, here's a few random pictures for you nature lovers out there. This, this little guy was waiting for me as I opened the door last week to leave for work. We've been having a whole lot of little tree frogs around our house. Which is, so if you like frogs, like tree frogs, I thought you might like that little dude. And then if you like spiders and hydrangeas, then this next picture is from you that is right from our front flower bed. Also this week, uh, in fact, this morning, uh, this afternoon, early this afternoon, the new fridge has been delivered, and we, we will have it in place and operational probably before the week is out. I want to thank Keith and Renee Williams for finding this unit, taking care of all the details, and I just can't wait to get that thing plugged in and operational, and I think you're going to really enjoy uh, getting to use that. Next week, I'll also have some updates on some of the work that we've been doing here at the church uh, we've been painting some, and when I say we, I mean Rod and Tanya Sperlin have been painting in uh, the drive through uh, in our main entrance, and also we've been doing some painting and updating in our sanctuary, specifically in the uh, balcony section. We needed to repaint some walls and also install some new lights, and so I'll try to have some pictures of those updates as soon as, as, soon as we can, and uh, we're, we're we are planning and praying towards being able to be back in the sanctuary at some point. By the time we're back in the sanctuary, who knows when that will be, um, we hopefully will have our audio and, and video project completed. All of these upgrades are, are, you know, we're doing some painting and some rearranging there in the foyer and some other things to freshen things up. Hopefully all of those things will be finished by the time we're back in that, uh, that space. For the meantime, though, I'm thankful that we do have the gym, and I'm thankful that you've been willing to attend there, and uh, this is giving us a chance to do some updates and needed improvements. All right, an All update right. also uh, on our MBSF work. Tuesday night, I got to spend uh, that evening with our college students and our college ministry uh, at our MBSF center on the campuses of Henderson State University and Washita Baptist University. The new space uh, that has been built is absolutely wonderful. Here's a clip of some of the worship so you can hear the new sound system and also hear what 50 to 60 college students worshiping Jesus sounds like on a Tuesday night.
So we had great attendance. They let me speak, and uh, hopefully they will survive that. And after the worship service, most of the students uh, stuck around to do tie-dye t-shirts, had some food and some fellowship. It was really a wonderful evening, and and, uh, although I stayed up a little bit later than I normally do, it was a great time to connect with those students. In fact, I connected with students from both campuses, OBU and and HSU, new students I'd never met because of the new students coming into the ministry and to the colleges. I was also able to reconnect with some of the students from last year. And one of the students that's new to the campus of OBU is Jackson Lamb, and he wanted me to share something with you. Uh, He wanted me to say thank you for the ministry uh, of MBSF and the fact that we sponsor the work uh, on this college campus. Uh, He's from out of state. And uh, from day one, the students involved in the ministry there and also Brother Daniel was personally involved in connecting with him and texting him and trying to get him involved in, in, uh, in a small group Bible study. And as a result of this, Jackson uh, Lamb was, was led to the Lord by Brother Daniel at one of the small group Bible studies. And I was able to connect with this young man and just talk to him about uh, his spiritual life and where the Lord is taking him. And uh, I just want to remind you, this is why we sponsor this ministry. It's Uh, It's not about building buildings. It's not about all of those things. Ultimately, it's about preaching the gospel, sharing the gospel, making disciples, and hopefully changing the lives of college students that come to those campuses by introducing them to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The buildings, the programs, and all those things are tools and instruments we can use to do that. Uh, But I just want to remind you of why we do the ministry. It is because we want to preach the gospel and make disciples. So we're thankful for the MBSF work that's going on. And we're also thankful for this new space. And so let me give you a quick update on the construction. Here's a few pictures of the MBSF construction progress. Uh, We now have a new ice maker in place. And uh, a new dishwasher installed. And we also have this really wonderful double-doored storage closet uh, that uh, you can see, will will ha- they'll have all of their tables and chairs that will allow them to do a lot of things in that room. And they can get the chairs out of the way, the tables out of the way, and uh, it's just great to be able to do multiple things in that room. And uh, we're thankful for this storage closet that's been built. So our work crew, under the direction of of Donnie Qualls, has been hard at it this last month, trying to finish the storage closet, trying to finish the wash and washer and dryer, the utility room, and and uh, just a lot of things that they're working on. Uh, the flooring project the contractor should be finished with that hopefully sometime next week Um, the washer and dryer has been delivered and we will get it installed and so we're making progress every week and we're getting very close to the end and uh, so you can pray with me because I know brother Donnie is planning for and praying for uh, the fact that he he would like we would like us to have enough money left over to be able to repaint um the old meeting floor space, and also paint the outside of the building, and also finish up all the landscaping. So we're praying that there will be enough money left uh, from our project, our building fund, that uh, the the churches of the Arkansas State Mission Project have have given us to be able to finish all of that. So just pray about the finishing details as we uh, put a bow on this building uh, project. One final update, we had another great Sunday of worship together, 152 in attendance, Praise God, we had four first-time guests, and I was able to personally connect with all four of them and uh, follow up with them some this week. I'm so thankful. Uh, We've got somebody in our church as well that's helping me uh, send out cards uh, to our first-time guests, and I'm so thankful that we're able to, I mean, folks, there are a lot of churches that are not going to survive COVID. There are a lot of churches that aren't going to be meeting, uh, and they're not going to, they're not going to make it out on the other side. I was reading a blog post this week from one of our from the secretary treasurer of our mission work and he was talking about the fact that he is seeing that a lot of churches are really struggling so not only are we able to continue forward God has been sending us first time guests and we don't need to take that for granted we need to thank him for that connect with them as we can and pray that they'll become a part of our church going forward wouldn't it be great to have some folks join the church in the middle of all of this craziness and uh, join us on the other side of COVID as we get back to it Well, we're continuing our study, the Beatitudes, on Sunday morning. If you missed this last week, blessed are the pure in heart. Tune in to YouTube and go back. We're right there on the YouTube channel. 
This coming Sunday, I'll be preaching uh, the next beatitude, which is blessed are the peacemakers. So come and join us on Sunday morning, 1030. Well, folks, grab your Bibles. I'm so thankful uh, for a word from the Word this week from my ministry partner here. And our worship pastor, Brother Sean Crane, is going to share our devotional. So open your Bibles and ask God to open your heart to His truth as Brother Sean teaches. Well, good evening, church. Uh, we're going to be talking just a little bit tonight about blessing. We have been studying uh, in Matthew chapter 5, they're studying the Beatitudes, and it's talking about blessed are you, blessed are you. And um, so we thought, thought I'd just do a little study, I guess, uh, tonight about blessing. And um, the concept of God's blessing us is not unique to Matthew chapter 5. In fact, it's throughout the entire Bible, Genesis to Revelation. That's what we're going to look at uh, just a little bit this evening. Genesis chapter 1, we'll begin there, uh, verses 26, 26 through 28 uh, says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. It has always been God's intention to bless mankind. From the very beginning, it has always been God's intention to bless mankind. In fact, God designed this earth to have mankind subdue it, to rule over it, and to you know, be God's ambassadors, God's representatives here on earth uh, to make sure the will of God is done here on this earth. And God put us in charge. That's what mankind's responsibility is. So when he created Adam and Eve, he said, let them rule, let them be on, in charge of the earth. And in fact, it's that reason that Jesus had to come as a man, because everything that God has done has to be done on earth. Everything God has done on earth has to be done through mankind. And so it couldn't be God and you know giving his life. It had to be a man. So God had to set aside his godhood and become a man because God determined from the very beginning when he created Adam and Eve that we would have dominion over the earth and that he would be... Um, um, Adam would be the, the one that would rule, and Eve would be the one that would rule over everything. And God came as a man then and lived the life that we, had, uh, we have to live without sin and in the form of Jesus and, and blessing us through that, um, and he did it as a man. So God's every intention from the very beginning has been to work through mankind on earth and to bless mankind. That's what it has always been. Before sin and after sin, God's um, concept has been to be a blessing to us because He wants us to understand who He is, His character, and how wonderful He is. So first of all, we need to understand what blessing actually is. Uh, Dictionary.com which, you know, back in my day, <laughs> um, it, we would have said Webster's defines, but now it's dictionary.com defines blessing as a special favor, mercy, or benefit, the in, or, or, or the invoking of God's favor upon a person. And that's definitely a concept of blessing. Um, and, and specifically as it deals with God and His work on the earth, God's favor, God's blessing, God's work. Uh, Vine's Expository Dictionary, which is a biblical dictionary, it defines blessing as to cause to prosper, to make happy, or to bestow blessings on. And this has been God's plan. This has been His, His way of working is to bless, to, uh, to cause us to be happy, to place His favor on us. That's, that's His desire. That's what He wants to do. That's why He created us. And it's also why Satan came after us in the garden, because God, Satan knew that God wanted to bless, that He wanted to make mankind this great demonstration to all of creation of God's favor, of God's blessing, and of God's love, and of God's grace. 
And so Satan came after mankind to try to disrupt that plan, to try to thwart God's efforts at showing his character. And so then God thwarted Satan's plan by, again, coming as a man and living the life that we have to live, giving his life for us, conquering sin, conquering death, conquering hell, thereby opening us back up when we accept him to the blessing of God. So from the very moment God created man, he blessed us. And it was on the sixth day of creation. It's what we just read in Genesis chapter 1. It's on that sixth day that God created man. And on that very same day, God said he gave man rule over the earth as his representatives, and he blessed them. So that blessing was from the very moment Adam took his first breath, God blessed him. And that was his purpose. That was his intent for it from the very beginning was that man be happy in serving the Lord, in doing things the way God wants it done, that, that man would find happiness, that he would find contentment, that he would find pleasure in the Lord. And that was God's plan. So we're going to look just a little bit. This is not unique to Matthew, and it's not unique to Genesis. In fact, God's blessing is throughout the Scripture. And I have a, a, a list here, just a few highlight spots in every single book of the Bible. Um, we're not going to spend a lot of time on them because obviously it would take forever. But we'll start with Exodus. We've already read in Genesis. Exodus 23, verses 25 through 26. God promised to bless the people if they followed His law. God's blessings are conditional. Um, there is the, the blessing of God's grace and of God's forgiveness. And if we accept Jesus as our Savior, then there's unconditional grace, unconditional favor there. But that relationship with God, that closeness with God, if we're going to walk with Him daily, there's, there's some conditions. And so in this case, in Exodus, they, there was a law they needed to follow to stay close to God and to be in a place where they could be blessed by God. Leviticus 26, 1 through 12, God lists the blessings He will give the people if they follow Him. Numbers 6, 22 through 27, God teaches a poem of blessing and then promises to bless His people. He's so very um, concerned about blessing His people that He actually wrote a poem and taught it to the people so they could learn that and understand that God's whole purpose was to bless and then to share that blessing with other people. Deuteronomy, um, God again gives a list of blessings for those who are faithful to follow. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 through 12. Joshua, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. God promises to bless Joshua and the children of Israel and to be with them wherever they go. Judges, chapter 13, verse 24. God blessed the young boy Samson and the Spirit of God began to move in him. There were many, many judges and Samson was one of those judges and he, as, from the very moment he was born God blessed him and the Spirit of God started working in him uh, from a very early age, uh, very, very, very early on in his life. Uh, the book of Ruth chapter 4 verses 13 through 22, God blesses Ruth for her faithfulness and made her part of the lineage of David the Messiah and the Messiah. So Ruth, uh, this is Moabitess, and she is blessed by God, gets brought in, and because of her faithfulness, she actually gets brought into this family that becomes the lineage of both great King David and on down uh, generations later, Jesus Christ, the Messiah himself. Uh, she became part of his um, earthly family. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 18 through 21, God blesses Hannah with many children because she had faith in him and had been faithful to him. You know, she asked for one child and, and promised, you know, God, if you will give me just one child, I'll give him back to you and he can serve you faithfully. And she did that. And later on after that, God blessed her with many more children. So she was blessed by God. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 8 through 16, God blesses David and the entire land of Israel for David faithful heart. In fact, David's faithfulness, you'll see in a moment, uh, because he was so faithful, God was so pleased with his life. Now, there were, there were imperfections. David made some mistakes, but overall, David's life was focused on God, and God blessed him, and he blessed the land of Israel for generations because of David's faithfulness. 1 Kings chapter 9, verses 3 through 5, God promises to continue the blessing he gave to David and continue that on to Solomon if Solomon will be faithful. 
God told Solomon, if you will live like your father David and be faithful to me, then I will bless you just like I blessed David. Solomon didn't make it all the way through that uh, like David did, but Solomon was relatively faithful for a number of years. Um, 2 Kings chapter 20, verses 4 through 6, God blesses Hezekiah with 15 extra years of life, and he blessed him in Israel for David's sake. That's what I was talking about before. Hezekiah was relatively faithful, but he had uh, some faltering in the end of his life and really just kind of turned his back on God for a while. And, uh, but God had made promises to David, and he had promised to bless Israel and for David's sake. And um, so for Hezekiah's repentance, and then for David's sake, God blessed Hezekiah. So First uh, Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9, God blesses Jabez and answers his prayer because of Jabez's faithfulness. There's this whole list of people that are just names like a phone book, and then suddenly there's this spot where it stops and it talks about Jabez and how he was faithful to God, and he prayed, and God answered his prayer because of his faithfulness, and God blessed him uh, for living a faithful life. Um, Second Chronicles chapter 17, verses 3 through 6, God blesses Jehoshaphat for his faithfulness and establishes his strong rule. Jehoshaphat was in this li the lineage of kings, and many of the kings had not been faithful. But Jehoshaphat said, no, we're going to turn back and we're going to serve the God of uh, Israel wholeheartedly and completely. And God blessed him for that and established a strong rule for him. Ezra chapter 7, God's hand of blessing is on Ezra, and God blesses him to begin to return the people to Israel. Nehemiah chapter 2, God blesses Nehemiah by making King Artaxerxes favorable toward him to send him to Jerusalem. Artaxerxes wasn't even a Christian, but God uh, worked in his life because of Nehemiah's faithfulness and made Artaxerxes faithful, uh, uh, favorable towards Nehemiah so Nehemiah could go do the work that the Lord had called him to do because Nehemiah had been faithful. In the book of Esther, God blesses Esther by protecting her and her people from the wicked man Haman. God's not even really specifically mentioned in the book of Esther, but the whole thing, the whole concept of the book of Esther is how God provides and God worked in the background to make things work for His will and His way to protect His people who had been faithful to Him. And Esther was one of those faithful, and God blessed her for it. Job chapter 42, verses 10 through 16, the Lord blesses Job at the end of his life with a double portion of what he had had before the test began. Satan went after him and took everything away from him, and Job was faithful to God. He faltered a little, but overall he remained faithful to God through all of that, and he never turned his back on God. And God blessed him for it, and in the end of his life, God blessed him tremendously with twice what he had before Satan started messing with him. So, Psalms. The whole book, the whole thing is just blessing after blessing, uh, just about. Uh, but we'll just pick one, Psalm 41, and it tells us that the Lord's blessings are upon those who have a heart of giving and faithfulness. Um, you can go through the Psalms, there are many, many ones that talk about God's blessings on His faithful people. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, God's blessings are rich and have no sorrow. Uh, when, when we have God's blessings following, uh, falling on our lives, Oh my goodness, it's just such a wonderful experience, and there's no sorrow in that when God is blessing you. Ecclesiastes 5, 18 through 20, God's blessings rest on those who find contentment doing the work God has called and equipped them to do. Uh, when, when we truly just give our lives to God and just find contentment in serving Him and doing what He has for us to do, Oh, the, the joy that's in that is tremendous, and there's a lot of release, a lot of stress goes out of our lives, and we just focus on what God wants us to do, and there's blessing after blessing that flows from that. And Solomon found that out and wrote about it in Ecclesiastes. And then in the Song of Solomon, well, it's just this great love story, and God blessed Solomon uh, with true love that is beyond measure, and that, that's just a whole story of this, this wonderful love relationship where God was blessing Solomon uh, through, through that Isaiah chapter 51, verses 1 through 3, blessings of joy and happiness are promised to those who pursue righteousness. So trying to you know, live a good, holy, Christian, godly, righteous life brings that blessing of joy and happiness. Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8, God blesses those whose hope is in the Lord and who trust in Him. Lamentations 3, 22 through 26, God blesses those who wait for Him and shows mercy and compassion. 
In Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 25 through 27, there shall be showers of blessing on those who are faithful to the Lord. And in Daniel chapter 1, verse 17, God blessed Daniel and his friends for their faithfulness. You know, they refused to eat the meat sacrificed to idols, um, and God truly blessed them, and it, it was definitely supernatural, so that others even recognized, no, this was something that was supernatural. So God get a great blessing on Daniel's life. Uh, Hosea chapter 14, verses 4 through 9, God promises to bless repentant Israel. Joel chapter 3, verses 17 through 21, God promises to redeem and bless Israel in the future and bring them to true faith. This hasn't happened yet. This one's still coming. And eventually, Jesus is going to set foot literally on the Mount of Olives, and he's going to rule and reign in Jerusalem on the throne of David, where David ruled. And there's going to be such a, a great revival there and a great awakening amongst the Jewish people. And they will come there. Right now they're in the land, but they're in the land in unbelief. But eventually they will be there, and they will be there in belief, in faith, in Jesus Christ and during that millennial reign. And that is a promise that is still coming, and it's going to be a great blessing on the nation of Israel. Amos chapter 9, verses 13 through 15. God promises to bless the land of Israel in the end days. Again, dealing with that same time period. Obadiah, God promises to bless throughout the book of Obadiah. Uh, God promises to bless Israel by removing the scourge of Edom from them and restoring them to their land. So uh, that was a promise that God uh, promised to bless them by bringing them back into their land. Jonah, uh, we see God blessing Nineveh and Assyria by sending the prophet Jonah to give them a chance to repent. Nineveh was not a Christian nation. Nineveh was not a Hebrew nation. It was not um, a godly nation in any way. Uh, or Assyria, and Nineveh was Assyria's capital. And God still worked in their lives and wanted to bless them by being patient with them. And so he sent them the prophet Jonah, who was reluctant and eventually went after some ordeal. And they repented and, for a time at least, turned their lives around. And so God was patient with them, and he blessed a nation that wasn't Israel, wasn't the church, wasn't anything to do with God or Christ. Uh, God still worked with them and blessed them. So God wants to bless. Micah chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. God blesses the world by promising to set up his own throne in Jerusalem and from there to bless the earth. And that's what we're talking about a while ago. Jesus is going to set up his throne there in Jerusalem and he's going to rule and reign. And his rule and reign will stretch out over the whole world and be a tremendous blessing to the whole earth and bring real peace. Um, Nahum chapter 1 verse 3, God blesses Assyria by being slow to anger and patient even though his wrath did surely come. That's what we were talking about a while ago with Jonah. Um, Assyria eventually fell to the wrath of God, but God said in, in there that he had been slow to anger. He had been patient and waited and allowed people to live and allowed them a chance to repent. And that was a true blessing uh, for the land of Assyria. In Habakkuk, we see that God blesses by working in the background, even when we cannot see Him, and that the just will live by faith, and that God is working and not sleeping. So, you know, God's not necessarily working right in front of your face. Sometimes He's doing things in the background that we can't see, and some of it we may not even recognize until we get into heaven and look back on life. Some of it we'll look back and go, oh, wow, I see now how God was working even in this life. Uh, God is there, and he, you know, there's this blessing of Him working in our lives and making sure that the just that live by faith, uh, God's going to work. He's not sleeping. He's not slumbering. He is going to bless and be there for us and not leave us or forsake us. In Haggai uh, chapter 2, verse 19, God promises that from the day the foundation of the temple was laid, through the generations that follow, the people of Israel will be blessed. That moment when they laid the foundation of the temple of Israel, he said, from this day forward, Lord, you will be blessed. Um, in Zechariah chapter 8, God promised a future for the city of Jerusalem that is truly blessed, where all nations desire to be associated with the city. Back to Jesus ruling and reigning. It's going to be such a wonderful time there in Jerusalem and in that, that area that all the nations are going to want to be associated with the, the land of Israel and with uh, Jerusalem because that's where uh, the true blessings flow. 
Um, Malachi chapter 3, God promises that those who are faithful to tithe will be blessed beyond measure. Uh, that's a, a true blessing. And then into Matthew chapter 5, that's where we, we've been uh, for the last few weeks studying the Beatitudes, and Jesus gives the blessings of living that life with Him. Those are not blessings, uh, those are not rules to follow, as Brother Scott said. Those are just, when these things come to you, you are blessed because you are mine and you're living for me, and let me show you how you're blessed. And, um, and so that's um, what uh, Matthew gives us. Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16, Jesus blesses the little children. He's there already bringing that work to um, earth as a man, as a God-man, son of God, son of man, and he is blessing the little children. Luke chapter 6, verse 20 through 22, another list of blessings for life with Christ. Uh, some of them similar uh, with the Beatitudes. Um, John chapter 20, verses 29, verse, verse 29, Jesus declares a blessing on those who believe in faith without seeing. That's you and me. We, don't, we didn't get to watch Jesus grow up. We didn't get to watch him die on a cross. We didn't get to watch him rise from the grave, but we believe. And because we believe, there is a special blessing for us. Um, in Acts um, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21, the early church is blessed by the coming of the Holy Spirit. What a day that was when the Holy Spirit began His work on the church. Uh, the church was empowered through the Spirit, and uh, just a, an amazing day that began the Holy Spirit's work within the church, and it continues to this day. God's great blessing there in Acts. Romans chapter 15, verse 29, Paul reminds us that we have the blessing of the gospel of Christ, the very gospel, the very message of Jesus, and what, he, what God did for us through Him by dying on the cross, for our sins, for by rising from the grave, and by His promise to come back to take us to be with Him, that is a blessing in and of itself. First Corinthians chapter ten verse sixteen says, "We are blessed because we have the blessing of identity with the body and blood of Christ." Second Corinthians uh, chapter nine verse eight, we are blessed with everything we need to do the work God has called us to do. Anything God calls you to do, He will equip you to do. And we are blessed by God to do that. Galatians chapter 3 verse 9, God's blessings are on those who come to Him in faith. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Philippians chapter 25 verse 11, God has blessed us by coming to die for us. Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 through 15, Jesus has blessed us by erasing the laws of condemnation and triumphing over them by the cross on which he died. Um, and then 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, we learn that we have the blessing of the promise of Jesus' soon return and our eternal home in heaven. And those who have gone on to be with him are coming back with him, and we'll get to see them again, and we'll get to see him face to face what a blessing. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7, we are promised the blessing of rest for those who are troubled when Jesus is revealed from heaven. Right now, life can be trying. It can be difficult, especially when we're really trying to live for Him. Uh, there's persecution. There's struggles. Um, there's things that, that cause us problems in our lives, but we are promised in 2 Thessalonians the blessing of rest when Jesus comes. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, we find the blessing that Christ Jesus came came into the world to save sinners. Jesus Christ coming to the earth was a blessing on the earth. Uh, 2 Timothy 4 verse 8, we learn that God will bless those who are anxiously awaiting His coming and loving Him and will receive a blessing of a crown of righteousness. So when you're waiting for Him, looking for Him, living for Him, anticipating His coming, that crown of righteousness is a blessing that will be yours. So Titus chapter 2 verse 13, we have the blessing of hope in Jesus who will soon appear and we will get to see him. That's a great blessing, that hope we have. Philemon, we learn that we can be freed from slavery and brought into a family relationship with God and other believers. Uh, that story of Philemon is, is very, very um, poignant. It's, it's very nice 
to see how um, Onesimus is treated in that and how um, he is brought into the family. He's no longer really even considered a slave, even though legally he was. Uh, he was really considered a brother. And we, we can be freed from that, that bondage and brought into that relationship with God and other believers. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 13 through 20. Jesus is a blessing to us because as our great high priest, he has torn down the veil that separated us from God and brought us into his presence. James chapter 1, verse 12. We learn that those who endure temptation are blessed because they will inherit the crown of life. So there's another crown for enduring temptation, and we are blessed by that. 1 Peter 3, 8 through 14, we learn that we are blessed even when we suffer persecution for righteousness because God's face is turned against those who do evil. So we will be blessed because God is going to be against those who try to do us harm. Uh, Second Peter chapter one, verses five through nine, we learn that those who live and grow in Christ will be blessed and will be fruitful. First John, we learn that we have the blessing that God loves us, that Jesus is our advocate to the Father, and that the Spirit is our confidence of our relationship with Him. In Second John, we learn that those who remain in Jesus Christ have both the Father and, of, and the Son, and by implication, the Spirit. And in Jesus, we get all of God. We get 100% of Him um, when, when we accept Jesus as our Savior. And that's our blessing from God. Uh, Third John, we learn that those who live for God are blessed by God and have a true, close relationship with Him. In Jude, we learn that we are blessed with the mercy of the Lord and that is, His mercy results in eternal life. For those who believe. What a blessing. And in Revelation, oh, there's blessing after blessing for the churches of Asia and for, uh, for those uh, who are, are, are mentioned there in the book. But Revelation chapter 1 verse 3, God blesses those who read, hear, and obey the words of prophecy in the book of Revelation. There are many, many, many blessings throughout the book of Revelation. Uh, many other things in there too, curses and all that. But uh, for those who read, hear, and obey, we are blessed. God gives that blessing. So, Genesis to Revelation, every single book in some way has something to do with God blessing the world, God blessing mankind. That was his plan from the very beginning. Satan's plan has always been to interrupt the blessing of God, to thwart his efforts to bless. Because this great experiment with mankind is a testimony of God's character, of God's wonderful love, and of God's grace. That is, that's what this is all about. And um, so Satan's joy and Satan's plan is to tr try to interrupt God's plan so that God's character is marred by his interruption of God's great story. Well, this great story is not going to be interrupted. God has a, a way of overcoming anything Satan tries to do, and in every way, in every book, in every moment of every life, God's plan is to bless if we will accept Jesus as our Savior and if we will live for him. In fact, the only way to thwart the blessing of God is to reject that blessing. Um, if you reject Jesus as your Savior, you are automatically in sin and set aside for God's, not blessing, but God's uh, wrath. Um, that is set aside there because it was determined for Satan, and Satan tricked us. He uh, tempted us, and we have all fallen into that sin. And because we have fallen into sin, we are all doomed to the wrath of God automatically from birth. It's just part of who we are. It's the, it's the very nature that causes us to do wrong things. That's a part of us. It's a part of who we are. We're born that way. And that condemns us to the wrath of God. But Jesus came and he lived as a man so that we could, um, he, he could be give his life for us, and then rise from the dead, conquering sin, conquering death, conquering hell, conquering Satan, and give us an, a, a hope of eternal life. And all we have to do is accept Jesus as our Savior and as our um, propitiation, our replacement uh, for those sins and for that wrath, because all that wrath that was doomed for us was carried out on Jesus on the cross. And so he then took that for us. And if we accept that payment, we are moved from the wrath of God to the blessing of God. And so the only way to be left in the wrath of God is to reject what God did for us 
to bring us into his blessing. But if we accept Jesus as our Savior, then we are blessed. The other way that we can limit some of God's blessing after we have trusted Christ as our Savior is though we are still blessed, we could be blessed even more if we live for Him and serve Him and honor Him in everything that we do. And the more we live for Christ, the more we do the way God wants us to, the more blessing it brings on our lives. So we could limit God's blessing just simply by refusing to do things God's way. But doing things God way, God's way is well worth the effort because it's such a blessing to do it. And so it's, it's just a win-win situation. When we trust Jesus as our Savior and we live for Christ the way God asks us to, then the blessings fall one after another, after another, after another, blessing after blessing after blessing. Life can be, be difficult, it can be hard, there's death, there's disease, there's struggles, there's all these things that are part of a product of living in a sinful world amongst sinful people. Sometimes it's not even our own sin, it's just the sin that's in the world that causes all these things. But in the midst of all of that, we have that close relationship with Jesus and the blessings just flow. And it's a wonderful, wonderful life with Christ if we're truly willing to accept Jesus as our Savior and to live for Him and to honor Him, then the blessings just keep flowing. Genesis to Revelation, that's God's story. That's God's character. That's who God is and that's who God wants to be in your life and in my life. And all we have to do is just live for Him, trust Jesus as our Savior, and live for Him, and He will bless. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you that you are there, that you bless us time and time again. Thank you for your son, uh, for the sacrifice that you made on the cross uh, to give your life for us so that, that we could have eternal life in Jesus. And Lord, thank you for the blessings that you give day in and day out, Genesis to Revelation, birth to death. You are there for us, you love us, and you bless, and you bless, and we thank you Lord, we could never thank you enough. Lord, just help us to live our lives in a way that honors you and glorifies you because you deserve our praise, you deserve our glory, and you deserve our undivided attention because you are a wonderful God who blesses. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for always giving us so much. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Church, be blessed.